acceleration. So basically all we've done so far is we've went from our distance equation to our velocity. Now we're going from our velocity to our acceleration. So basically, 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 the acceleration is the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of distance. That's all it is. So if I give you velocity, you only have to find one derivative to, get to acceleration, right? If I give you the distance formula, you have to find two. That's it. So the key thing to remember <clears throat> is to not have a thick marker. All right. As you go from distance to velocity to acceleration, and the way you can go about doing that is finding the next derivative. So if I'm given velocity, I can find the first derivative to get to acceleration. But if I'm given distance, I have to find the first derivative to get to velocity, then the second derivative to get to distance, or to get to acceleration. Now remember, you can't get to the second derivative unless you have the first. That's the only way you can do it, unless you. So they show that you can say s, s prime of t, s prime of t would equal v of t in this instance. And then somehow they'll, they'll go ds over dt, which is the other notation. Or they can go s prime of t, which we could write as v prime of t, which we could also write as a of t, because it's the acceleration. And then the other form, they write it as d2s over dt squared. I don't know why they put the 2 in the middle and then the 2 after, but that is the format of which they do. Like every time. Every time. That's just... Mm, no. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. 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 It's true. All right. Big question. So here it says. A ball, and most of this you can do already today, before I even teach it to you, because we've looked at it before. So here it says, a ball is propelled vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 29.4 meters per second. It's actually going pretty good. The height S in meters of the ball above the ground is, approx is approximately S, or S of T, equals negative 4.9 T squared, which is actually negative 9.8, which is something that we deal with. What's that? Acceleration due to gravity. So when we get ourselves to acceleration, it's going to actually work itself down to acceleration due to gravity. You'll see that. So negative 4.9t squared plus 29.4t, where t is the number of seconds that elapses from the moment the ball is released. So what is the velocity of the ball at time t? And what's the velocity at time equals 1? So what am I going to make you do? First derivative for the first part, then. First derivative at 1. Try it out. Uh, S prime of T, which equals, I grab my paper because I'm going to run out of looking at the equation for a second here. So we get negative 9.8 T plus 29.4. And then we could write this as V of T equals S prime of T because it sometimes helps us out. So then V of 1 equals negative 9.8 times 1 plus 29.4. And what do we get? 19.6 meters per second. Okay, then the second one asks us, when will the ball reach a maximum height? And what you need to know is when we're reaching maximum heights, we actually have a maximum or a minimum. They look like this, boom, or they look like this, boom. And next unit, we're really going to drive this home. But when you reach a maximum height, what actually happens is what kind of tangent do you get? Do you know? You're going to get a horizontal tangent, correct? So we get a horizontal tangent at max and min. What is the slope of a horizontal line? Y it's just zero, right? Our slope is zero. The line is y equals. You're right. But the slope is just zero. We agree? So that means the tangent slope um, and tangent technically equals zero. We agree? So what does that mean? That means the first derivative equals what? What does the first derivative equal? Zero. If the tangent slope is zero, the first derivative equals zero. 
because tangent slope and first derivative are the same words. Just like roots, zeros, and x-intercepts are the same words, first derivative and tangent slope are interchangeable. Instantaneous rate of change ta and first derivative interchangeable. Correct? So, for this one, whenever it says, what is the maximum height, what is the maximum height the ball reaches, what is that, instant, what is that actually telling you? Yeah, so we're going to look for when f prime of x equals 0, or uh, technically s prime of t equals 0. And you're going to find the t, and then that's what? That's the time it reaches the maximum. Did I ask you for the time it reaches the maximum? No. We take the time and we do what? Plug it into the original and then we'll get the maximum height. So we actually have to find the time it happens at. Then once we know the time it happens at, we can plug it back into the original and get the height. Yes, and then we'll turn the other way. Yep. Okay. So B, we have V of T technically equaling zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the velocity equation equal to zero, find T. So we're going to get negative 9.8T plus 29.4 equals zero. Negative 9.8t equals negative 29.4. Divide by negative 9.8. And what does t equal? t equals 3 seconds. Correct? So sometimes they'll ask for the time it reaches maximum height. If they ask for the time it reaches maximum height, we'd box it, we'd be done. Correct? But this one actually asks, what is the maximum height? So we need to get height. Height is which formula? The original. So we plug it in, so now we actually want S of 3. Which means we're going to go negative 4.9 times 3 squared plus 29.4 times 3, and we get something meters. I was looking for that. I could just get it. Uh, we get 44.1 meters. So that's C. B says, when will the ball reach the maximum height? That's at second, three seconds. What is the maximum height? 44.1 meters. What is the acceleration of the ball at any time? So what do I have to find? Yeah, so I have to find S double prime. which is actually the same as A of T, right? <clears throat> which is nice. So if I have the first derivative, I just take the derivative of that. What's the derivative of negative 9.8T plus 29.4? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason why is it's already meters per second, and then you're dividing it by another second, so you get seconds squared. Now, actually... The good thing about this is if I ask you, what's the acceleration at 4 seconds? Negative 9.8. Acceleration at 3 seconds? Negative 9.8. Negative 9.8. He's on it. Okay? At this point, when there's no variable, you're done. You can give every acceleration at any time, which makes sense because it's the speed of gravity due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity, not speed. Wrong wording. Okay. E, how long is the ball in the air? How long is the ball in the air? We can say six seconds, but let's prove it. How long is the ball in the air? What's that asking you for? How long when height is when height is zero, when distance is zero. So they want when s of t equals zero. They want the time when the height is nothing. Correct? How long is the ball in the air? They want the x-intercept, which is when y is zero. Okay? So they want when the distance is zero. So we're going to go, what is the equation? Negative uh, 4.9t squared plus 29.4t equals 0. And then how can I solve this? I can take out a t, and I'm left with negative 4.9t plus 29.4. So one of your t's is 0. Is that the one where it's reaching, hitting the ground? 
No, that's where we started at. So times zero is great. Not an answer we're going to use. Then we have 4.9, negative 4.9t, plus 29.4 equals zero. Negative 4.9t equals negative 29.4, divided by negative 4.9. And t equals 6 seconds. Because you just doubled the max height time, which works. But if you have to show something, you have to you have to actually show the question. You're saying good. Uh, F says, what is the velocity of the ball upon impact with the ground? When did it hit the ground? Six seconds. So what am I asking you to find? S prime of six, which we can call v of six. Correct. That's all I'm asking. So I want. Negative 9.8 times 6 plus 29.4, which equals negative 29.4 meters per second. <clears throat> now it says, what is its speed? Which way? Down. Downward. Speed. Sorry, this one. Meters per second, downward. And then the speed is? 29.4 meters per second. This is the first one. So the negative on velocity is just the direction, correct? How do we know it's down and not like left or right? Because it's a ball going up and then coming back down. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? Some people will put left. It scares me sometimes. <laughs> but you know, it's a negative way. As well. <clears throat> okay, G. G says, what is the total distance? What is the total displacement? Zero, zero, zero. This one would be zero. Because displacement, well, it's like, I got this. Okay. My one question all day. <laughs> You've actually answered two quite nicely. Mm -hmm. So the displacement would be zero because I started at height zero, I ended at height zero, I'm still at zero. What would the distance be, though? I mean, not time is zero. The yeah, That's what I, was I was like, to you're, yep, yeah, okay. So the maximum is what? Half of the distance. Okay, but what is the maximum? I was asking for the oh, number. The <laughs> there we go. So it takes us 44.1 meters per second. So it takes us 44.1 meters to get up here and then 44.1 meters to get back down. So that is 88.2 meters. I wasn't disagreeing. We were just showing some words. You were correct. There were some things going on. There were some words. Way down here is this. No. We're flipping over. We're doing trig derivatives. No, we're having notes. No notes. Can't do it. All done. To make you hand write or print them? No, that is hand write No, you have to print them more. Wordle. That's the way you go. Wordle. 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 2.5, the ribbon is like sitting on my face. Okay, so these are ones you have to memorize. Um, the easiest way to memorize them is anything with a C, the derivative of it is negative. So anything without a C, the derivative is positive. So the negative signs and positive signs are easy to memorize. So the derivative of cos is negative sign. The derivative of cotan is negative cosecant squared. 
And then, the, and then the derivative of cosecant is negative cotan cosecant. So we really don't need, this is just to prove why these exist, but I don't ever memorize those because those are no, of no help. So really, sine, the derivative of sine is cos, the derivative of cos is negative sine, the derivative of tan is secant squared, the derivative of cotan is negative cosecant squared, secant is tan x secant x, and cosecant x is negative cotan cosecant. You will memorize them, trust me, it'll just happen. Now, the signs are the easiest. Like I said, if you take the derivative of, a, of one with a c, it's negative. If it doesn't have a c, it's positive. Okay? You have your little table, you're going to need to memorize so here, we're going to differentiate the sine function. What's the derivative of sine? Cos. Cos. All of these are going to be cos, okay? This one, do I have to do quotient rule or product rule or anything? No. Can I just do my normal rules? Yes. So, I'm going to do the derivative, y prime. The derivative of x is? 1. Plus 4, the derivative of sine is? Cos. Cos x. Done. So if there's something with the x, we're going to have to do chain rule, which all of these lessons don't have, this whole lesson doesn't have anything with the x, just always going to be an x. If there's a number in front, note to self, you can just go 4 cos x. The reason why, and I'll prove to you why that is, is if we use product rule, we have 4 and then times sine x, right? This is just like when we had 4 e to the x, it would just say 4 e to the x. The reason why is you, if you use product rule, you'll, go, you'll get 4 times the derivative of g, which is cos x, and then plus... Uh, sine x times what? Zero. So this is always going to cancel off. When your coefficient is a number, you'll always just get 4 and then do the derivative of what's beside because this goes away every single time. So 4e to the x, say 4e to the x. You just did 4 and the derivative of e to the x, right? B, I have to do what? Multiply. I have to multiply because there's a multiplication in there, so I have to do what? 2x. I have to do product rule. So, we have f and then g. f prime is 2x. g prime is cos x. So, I'm going to get y prime equals, and then I'm going to get f, which is x squared, times g prime, which is cos x, plus g which is sine x, times f prime, which is 2x. Now, if you technically did the same as the top of a quotient, so say you did g f prime minus f g prime, but instead of the minus, you put a plus, it'll get you the same thing, right? Because the plus doesn't matter. So if you wanted to just memorize the top of the quotient rule and use it for the product rule, you can with a plus sign. Like you can go g f prime plus f g prime. It's just these flipped. But if I flip two things with a plus sign, does it change anything? No. no. So I don't know why they don't state it that way, but they don't. They state it as always fg prime plus gf prime. But you could go the top of the quotient rule with a plus sign, right? Because quotient rule has to be in a specific order, but product rule doesn't. Done. We could technically take an x out, which they could do. They could write the x out. Sometimes they'll do this. And the only reason why we can take the x out is because the x is in, would be in front, right? It's in a bracket by itself. Can we ever take the x's out from beside the sides and the coses? No. You guys try whoa, C and D. I don't know what just happened. C and D. C is a? Quotient rule, D is a product rule. So we have F, we have G, F prime is cos x, G prime is, is 1. Derivative of x is just 1. So we get Y prime equals G, which is x, times F prime, which is cos x, minus... Um, f, which is sine x, times g prime, which is 1, all over x squared. Done. Hmm? If you bring the x up to the negative 1, you have to product rule. 
and then you have to move the x's to the bottom because they'll always have it where you'll have positive exponents. No, because that way is sucky. Don't do it that way. Because if you do it that way, you're going to have to try and get common denominators between both of them, and then that moves the x squared down, which is way harder. Like, do not do that method. Stop the madness. Hmm? No, I keep it. I really like that one. Brings joy to my heart. So one doesn't have to be here, but I'm not rewriting this. Okay. F, G. So we can get Y prime equals um, F prime is E to the X. Because it'd be E to the X ln E times 1, which those go away, right? And then G prime is cos x. So I'm going to get f, which is e to the x, g prime, which is cos x, plus uh, g, which is sin x, times e to the x. And then I can GCF and e to the x out. And I get cos x plus sin x. They will always take the e to the x out, just so you know. They always do that. And what we're going to end up doing in the next unit is we're going to set e to the x equal to 0 and then cos x plus sine x equal to 0 and find the x values where they exist. Okay. So this and the previous pages practice problems are what you got for homework.